In this Lord of the Flies video, we'll look at two different ideas from philosophers Hobbes and Locke. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we're going to use this information to make more connections in our level three analysis. Specifically, this information is important to central themes in Lord of the Flies and characters within the story. Plus, as well, we can make connections to the historical context and Golding's life. Now, we've got our first philosopher, Thomas Hobbes. He's a British philosopher born in 1588 and died in 1679, and his most famous work is called Leviathan. On the other hand, we have John Locke. John Locke is also a British philosopher from 1632 and he, uh, until his death in 1704, and his most famous work is Two Treaties on Government. Now, round one. Let's see how their philosophies differ when discussing the nature of mankind. Now, I have our little dial in the middle, and this will tell us if they believe that mankind is naturally evil or naturally good. So what's Hobbes got to say? Well, he says human beings are guided by self-interest. They're selfish. They will always put themselves over other individuals or the society. Humans are naturally violent and selfish. Well, I'd say that Hobbes believes that humans are naturally evil. Let's have a look at John Locke. John Locke says that humans are social animals by nature and they're free to pursue life, liberty and health as given by God. They will treat others as they want to be treated themselves. I'd say Locke thinks we're naturally pretty good. Let's look at round two then. This is the nature of society. So we'll begin with Hobbes again. Well, Hobbes thinks that there are limited resources in the world and mankind cannot and will not cooperate. The world is full of distrust and people will kill for their own self-interest. Because of them, the state of nature and the state of society is a state of war. Sounds pretty evil to me. He thinks humans are naturally pretty evil. What about John Locke then? Well, our man John Locke, he believes we exist in a state of moral goodness, freedom and equality. Yeah, it gets a bit chaotic from time to time, but it's mostly peaceful. People just want to preserve their natural rights given by God, life, liberty and health. Locke thinks we're naturally pretty good. Let's look at our final round then, round three. The role of government. Well, our man Hobbes thinks mankind may be naturally self-interested and selfish, but they are rational. They will submit to order and authority if it means they get to live a, a better life. They'll behave because they're selfish and they want to belong to a society. Therefore, Hobbes thinks we need a government to keep us civilised and controlled. Without government, we break into war and violence, but we'll act well if the government says that we can have a better life. He thinks we're naturally evil, but he thinks governments are good. John Locke, on the other hand, has a different outlook when it loads. He thinks that we give up our rights to take our own justice in order to have overwhelming and impartial justice from the government. But our right to liberty, health, life and property is still most important. He thinks we don't need a government. He thinks because we're quite good people, we're mostly peaceful and it's important that we are self-reliant. Um, we don't actually need a government. We just accept one because they do provide some justice. So, out of these two, which one do you most agree with? Which one do you feel like you strongly believe? Is it that humans are selfish, war is natural, and we need centralised power to make us behave? Or that humans are social, they just want freedom and health, and centralised power isn't necessary? Decide which one your beliefs fit best with. The next thing I want you to do is consider our text. Which one do you think William Golding, the author of Lord of the Flies, would subscribe to. Especially given the context, you know, he fought in the war, he saw violence, he said, man produces evil as a bee produces honey, he wrote Lord of the Flies on the verge of nuclear war shortly after World War II. 
and given what happens in the story and how his characters behave. Alternatively, consider R.M. Ballantyne. What would he think? This is a man who writes stories around the time of colonialism, and where Christianity in Europe was really, really powerful. His stories are often about self-reliance, and in his books, British Christian schoolboys behave really, really well. They're innately good. I want you to consider both people and both philosophies and try to find evidence and examples from real life and from the text to support what you say.